Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on Gran Turismo Sport. We're back with the FIA Nations highlights from the final round at Goodwood driving the Mini. So this was a little bit of a crazy qualifying. What you're about to witness here is possibly one of the craziest qualifying sessions that I have ever witnessed on the game. So remember, if you do enjoy these videos, do subscribe to the channel, hit that notification button and give it a thumbs up if you enjoy it obviously so yeah let's get on with this you can see straight away we're in top split this is slot number one of the day and in slot one everyone's obviously going for the big points so what that means is no one will want to give the slipstream to anyone else and it's actually quite comical but this is partly due to pd's weird system of using a very strong slipstream for this race so the slipstream was two and a half seconds in distance and it was so strong that it just made your laps incredibly overpowered if you had a good slipstream. Now, this is something that I hope Gran Turismo 7 really puts to rest. Single qualifying, like you do on iRacing, get rid of all this rubbish, make it down to pure skill, and make it down to a fact of whoever qualifies based on pace, not on lock. But this is what we've got at the moment, and you're about to witness it all kick off. So what you're seeing now is everyone's going to start ghosting because no nobody wants to lead the group of cars around the track so you're going to see some quite comical driving right now everyone's going to be stopping and starting and even reversing we're even going to reverse when we see everyone else doing it because this is what's happening um everyone's wants to be four or five cars back because it's such a strong slipstream you can see when we go to chase camera just how bad this current situation is and it's just craziness this is what tends to happen and this is why um they actually change the slipstream on some of the settings to weak as well because they did used to use weak settings for a lot of other races but now we're down to the seven half temps it's not as bad normally but with this type of car this type of combination this was always going to happen absolute chaos everyone grouped together you can see we're trying to do a fake go just to get a few people to go and then what you're going to see is people are going to start reversing back because there's you need a run-up really out of the chicane so everyone stopped and people are starting to reverse you can see everyone's going back and forth this is just absolute comical and this is the type of thing that happens though in top speed it won't happen in lower lobbies because in general lower lobbies won't be so obsessed with getting that big amount of points obviously 430 points were available in this lobby and it was a final race of the season so everyone obviously wants the best chance of getting them points for their final race so eventually we did all start getting going you can see absolute chaos going through the ghost and look how slow we are out of this corner now obviously if we would have gone for a solo lap we probably could have matched this lap anyway but the point is everyone's had this kind of start to the lap of being really slow so it's just a case of doing as good as lap as you can now from this position and yeah we're obviously in p10 in this little field of drivers we've got a few that have started out in front and this group in front of us that are obviously very closely bunched as we see now this could probably cause a little bit of chaos in this lap as Ari runs a little bit wide we're going to go down the right hand side because we've got a massive run on him there and he should be able to slot in behind my car in the slipstream so we're going to carry on this lap and see where we end up as we go through this um kind of tricky section now this lap was a long lap in this car but a very easy lap if i'm honest it wasn't the hardest track to drive because there was very little only a couple of areas where you're actually braking so this corner just downshift a little bit let the car coast stay in fourth gear on the throttle use the slipstream as we have one driver that's gone completely off track now th this driver really should have given up the lap at that point because he had dirty tires he was all over the track caught in front of another driver and yeah he's now got a lot of on the steer out of that corner he tries to block off um, p7 we're going to go down the right hand side of him and just try and carry on our lap but you can see he stays to the left hand side there he's obviously got the slipstream a little bit on the left but we should be okay now to cut ahead of the driver that's just been off the track but you can see he really i think he should have just backed out of that one um but he carried on his lap and i think he might even still have a little bit of dirty tires i'm not too sure because he's only done one corner since so coming through here you can see that he's still got dirty tires he's got no grip at all and he's off the track so again he's kind of ruined that lap but then he rejoins again right in front of other drivers a little bit naughty but um perhaps he just wanted to qualify wherever he could so we're going to go over the line anyway at least we got a lap in there we got a clean lap in and we're actually going to start at the moment p4 but that will drop down it drops down a few positions and in the end i think we started around p6 so not too bad really considering so it worked out for us okay in this race as we fast forward through the grid you can see um, Pepe there in P2, Theo in P3, uh, Robin and then um, Angeloff and then myself in P6 and we had Josetti and a lot of very very fast drivers all behind us because of that crazy qualifying so starting the race traction control on one 
and let's see what happens now this car is incredibly slow at getting away but yeah I have got a little bit lucky there with the qualifying now this combination was quite funny because I wasn't going to do this race we just jumped on this basically for a little bit of entertainment for streaming and to give you lots something to watch live and we're in a quite a good position here in p6 with quite high points available so if we can just hold on into this position or gain a position in this race i'll be very very happy because i think over 350 points were available for anything in the top five so let's see what we can do here we've got a run on p5 straight away as he's not got a very good exit off that corner and we've got Antonio behind us there as well in the mini. Obviously, everyone's in the mini, but he's in the other mini behind us. And he's looking to go past as well. But we, because of the power of the slipstream, we can't actually go past him even though we had a better run. So we're going to tuck back in behind P5 and just make sure that we try not to make any major errors through this section of track. So again, let the car coast through fourth gear, then back on the throttle and just try and follow behind these cars. Now, I'm going to be brutally honest, didn't take much skill this race because... PD basically took all the skill away from this race by introducing the weak, pe uh, the weak slipstream system, which was two and a half seconds. So as long as you drove consistent and don't make any big errors, the slipstream will do the hardest part of the work for you. But like I say, we, you've got to be here in this position to take advantage, and we're doing that at the moment. We're on lap one, and we're still in P6. We've not made any mistakes on lap one. And I was actually um, expecting this race not to go very well because I hadn't really done any practice. I didn't really I don't really like Goodwood as a track and I'm not a big fan of the Mini. It's got a fun car to drive, but front wheel drive cars don't really suit my style of driving. But at the moment we're doing okay. We're managing to hold our ground here and we actually get quite a good run off that corner there, which is going to give us a run up the inside of P5. We might be able to go for an overtake here. However, you can see he's got the slipstream to P4. Can we make this move work? We've got the run and we should have the inside line into turn into the first turn. So we've managed to hold on to this position and we've moved ourselves up to P5. So actually quite a good start for us here. We've actually done an overtake in this car, which I didn't expect to do. So up into P5 in this very high ranked top split lobby. So we're going to fast forward this lap now on lap two as we're just going to try and get a little bit closer to the slipstream of that lead group after overtaking that car. But like I say, we don't need to worry about being too far behind because the slipstream is such a long range you can afford to have this type of gap now if the slipstream was on real this gap would probably be a little bit problematic because we'd start dropping off we wouldn't be picking up that full strength of the slipstream but in the current form that it is for this race no real issue you can see behind as well we've got a bit of a gap to antonio we've built that gap up to around half a second so at the moment it's all looking okay and our pace doesn't look terrible if i'm honest we're driving pretty well um taking quite nice lines through the corners um, I had done a little bit of time trial, obviously, to try and get used to the track. Uh, my pace wasn't particularly brilliant in time trial, but one thing I did try and do was, on time trial, I made sure I did the last chicane without running wide. A lot of people were running wide to obviously get a slightly better lap time, and uh, maybe that has helped, will help me out in terms of consistency when we get through to the final chicane. But I'm working our way up the hill now. You can see that there's a bit of side-by-side -side action going on in front of us. That's probably going to cost them a little bit of time into the right hand or up on up ahead as we see one driver's lost two positions and that is the thing with this combo one driver overtakes it the other driver behind them then gonna overtake you and it's just until you find the gap to slot back into the slipstream so yeah we're up into p5 getting very close to the cars in front through here you see antonio runs a little bit wide behind us in the mirror there but he manages to keep it on the track and then as we come through here we do it quite nice however we get a little bit too happy on the throttle and we run slightly wide now frustratingly my left tyre must have gone one inch onto the grass to give me dirty tyres because I knew it had. I just had a feeling it was, so I took this corner very cautious. And you can see, you can hear the understeer kicking into the car and we just don't have the grip through there. So we're understeering. One thing we don't want to do though is understeer onto the grass. So we just try and keep it on track, try and stay in the slipstream. And you've got Antonio on our right hand side now. So he's going to probably be able to go past there. He's going to get the slipstream now for a little bit as well on the inside wide there on the inside of that corner. So Antonio's got that position. We're just going to tuck in behind him and try not to lose any further position. So now we really need to focus on seeing if we can catch up to the group again. Because like I say, they're only around, what, six, seven times ahead. That shouldn't be a problem to get back up behind them to a reasonable extent. Because like I say, such a powerful slipstream, you can drop down to two seconds behind and still catch people up. But one thing we do want to make sure that we don't do is let the drivers behind get too close because like I say, any opportunity someone's going to try and overtake you and like I said before, if one car goes past you, 
the next car will go past and the next car and the next car etc so yeah we're going to skip on over a lap ahead now and um, we've got a little bit of a gap to p7 there and we're staying with antonio quite well and antonio is gradually gradually catching up to that lead group now again the only thing with this slipstream again is it can lead to quite boring races because everyone's got a strong slipstream from the fastest driver at the front of the field so that fastest driver is basically giving the pace to every other driver behind them and it's like it's just like a train of cars and this is why they ever i think they got rid of the weak slipstream a long time ago for mainly road car races but they brought it back for this for some reason and all this says to me is it doesn't really work because just look at the train of cars there's not much overtaking going on because everyone's got the same speed down the straight this is top split so everyone's up to a certain level of skill and when you've got that extra speed from the um, slip obviously you just tend to follow around in a train but for me at this point it's not too bad we're in p6 i think that's p6 would still be around 340 points which I think would have actually increased my points in the overall standings by the end of the season, which this was obviously the last round. So, yeah, watching the replay camera again, just how good does GT Sport look, though? Just look at the... Uh, this really does bring it into question about when GT7 comes out with the dynamic weather and dynamic time of day. I really feel that that is going to be one of the key things that is going to make Gran Turismo 7 look so much better than GT Sport when you can see that dynamically changing so let's fingers crossed it's going to be on as many tracks as possible we don't still know what tracks are confirmed for it it does look like a lot of them are is going to have the dynamic settings though so it is looking pretty good for that regard so now we work our way through the final chicane now to start lap 7 and you can see we got very close to P7 there P7 is very close to our bumper but again I don't think he wanted to go for a move too early because, like I say, if he starts battling with us, we both lose time. And then drivers behind him will also go for the move. So it's a very tactical race, this. You've got to be very smart with when you want to go for an overtake. Most people would try and do it on the last lap because, like I say, if you mess around too early, you're probably going to lose positions rather than gain them. But we've got a nice exit off that corner there. You can see also we did briefly actually get the fastest lap for a stage in this race, but Cash took it off us. Um, we did a 40.1 so our pace was not bad it was pretty good considering fuel is on on the car as well and it, it actually is quite funny because these laps are faster than what we did in qualifying and that shows you why people wanted the slipstream in qualifying because we've got fuel on at the moment and we're flying but um obviously in qualifying we went over the line at about two miles per hour so we lost out on probably over a second before we even started the lap but working our way through this corner, tricky corner of this, trying to stay in third gear, try and get the car over to the right hand side of the track and try and be very, very gentle with your steering inputs with FF cars. I find that the smoother you are when you bring the car back into a straight line, the smoother the acceleration is. If you're too aggressive, it tends to bog down a bit and you lose a bit of grunt going up the hill, for example, on this straight. But at the moment, we're doing okay. Like I said, I, don't, I really dislike FF cars, but at the moment it's quite fun. The Mini is quite an enjoyable little car to drive. Um, obviously very small so a lot of room for overtaking if you can get near anyone but we are starting to get quite close to Antonio now you can see we're only a couple of attempts behind him and we're actually really hooking up this um, final chicane you can see driving it really nicely getting very close to the wall there but again really nailing that exit and the entry into the corner so driving much better than I expected I'm going to be brutally honest I was expecting this to be a bit of a disaster but so far it's going quite well we're into P6 can we gain another one or two positions before the end of this race? It should all start kick off a little bit on the final lap because that is when people are going to probably try and go for their overtakes. And at the moment, it does look like Antonio is having the same thoughts. He's just trying to sit back at the moment. He's waiting for an opportunity. He's not really close enough to P4 yet to really take advantage of anything. But we're in a good position. If anything does kick off, we can gain a position. And like I say, if we can get in the top five, that would be a brilliant result at this combination in slot one. Um, it'd be over 350 points so I'd be well happy with that so working our way again through this tricky left hand corner again just letting the car coast through there almost and then back on the throttle as early as you can try not to let the right hand tire go on the grass because that loses you a bit of acceleration as well and then this corner was really I started to get in the rhythm of this corner probably because I was following Antonio a lot and um, with watching how he was doing it with the downshifting and just letting the car like drift and coast at the same time through that corner and back on the throttle nice and early I was really getting in a rhythm of just following him and just doing what he was doing through there so I was learning while following Antonio so again Antonio is one of the, in my opinion at the moment one of the fastest drivers on GT Sport so it's very good to follow someone like that and just pick up what they're doing so into the final section again this corner I was taking a bit of a different line to people you can see a lot of people going wide I was tighter 
and then downshifting and then getting on the throttle early, which was giving me quite good exit speed. You can see the car behind very close to us now as well. And again, into the chicane, very nervously into that chicane because that you can easily hit the wall and wreck your lap there. But it's starting to get very close up front now. And we've got a bit of a gap now to the car behind. We've managed to build that up over a couple of attempts so that he can't really go for a lunge. And we need to try and get as close as we can as Antonio. Looks like he's going to go for a move on P4. Is he going to make that work? He's up the inside. A little bit of contact. But I think that's fair in cars like this. It's, you know, it's a mini. You've got to have a bit of um, argy-bargy every now and then. As we're going to go up the inside. And we're going to get a little bump draft from the other car behind me. And this is what I was saying. Once one car goes past, just look at this. P4. He was in P4. He's now in P7. So it shows you from P4 to P7 just because he got overtaken once. And that is the effect of the slipstream. And obviously, everyone just following their way through. And now we're up to P5. We've just got to try and keep this position now as we have a little bit of drama behind us. It looks like a little bit of a mistake from some of the cars. And that's given us a nice, comfortable gap. So maybe we can push on and see if we can get another position in this race. Let's just see how this goes into the last few corners now. Trying to get a good exit off this one. We've got a reasonable run up the hill. We can see that they're fighting up front. And now, P3, his internet is about to absolutely diet and also if you look at antonio's connection his connection was awful however his car was not lagging luckily but um p3's lagging all over the place you can see he's on the right hand side now he's to the left and this was quite worrying because you don't know whether you're gonna get lag punted but you can see he actually benefited from this because his car's lagging everywhere and theo was actually in p i think two the whole race however that guy actually ended up lagging in front of him if you watch on the leaderboard there he lagged ahead of him and just went straight through his ghosted car um so he wouldn't have been able to do that without the lag and he ended up taking p2 so quite lucky for that driver you see antonio running a little bit wide on the final exit there i thought he might have got a penalty but luckily for him he did not get a penalty and we take quite a nice p5 in this um fia top split first lot of the day race and some pretty decent points so yeah i was well happy with that coming away with a p5 from this combination and as you can see here it's actually got me some quite pretty good points there 359 points from a race that i wasn't even going to do so it does show you sometimes just do it for a bit of fun because you never know what result you're going to get but yeah let's have a little look now as the fia season finished and we are, i feel like i did really well here we managed to get p2 in the uk and p11 in europe the hardest region in my personal opinion on gt sport for how competitive it is and we pick up a P11. So what a great season to end that exhibition on there. Um, there is going to probably be one more exhibition season on GT Sport. So let's see how we do in that one. But thanks again for watching the video. I'll be back with more highlight videos and race action from daily races and live streams. So make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. Thanks again for watching, everyone.